Thank you very much, Alistair, and thank you for the invitation. It's, it's actually not the sort of talk that I'm uh, used to giving, but it's been very interesting to give me an excuse to think about, a reason rather than excuse, I guess, to think about a few things uh, and to reflect more broadly on an issue that is very close to my, to my heart and my interests, which is women and economics. Um, so, uh, as Alistair says, I'm Emeritus Professor at the University of Manchester. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. And I'm also involved in the Royal Economic Society, which I'll also talk about as my professor at the University of Sydney when I finished my undergraduate degree and was looking to go into an academic career. He said, I don't think being a woman is going to be a disadvantage. It might even be an advantage. And in many ways, it was an advantage because people noticed you. If there weren't many women around, people did notice, notice you. So I was often invited to come and give seminars in institutions, for example, because as people knew who I was. And where I thought was a good place to start was to think about the perception of economics. And I think this is really important and something that we as economists have a bit taken for granted, um, that people understood what economics is, what economists do, and, and all those sorts of things. But it's not as well understood as we as economists might have thought. So this is some information from a survey that was conducted last year. And there, among the ver various questions they're asked, there was one about, they're asked, I regard economics as a subject usually associated with men, women, both equally, etc." You can look at the big, the big blue one. You might think, oh, well, 54% say both equally, men and women. So maybe that's not bad. The majority of people in this survey who responded, the general public, thought about economics as being, didn't, with particularly with one gender. But much more worryingly, 32% of the people associated economics as a subject with men. A mere 1% associated it as a subject with women, and then the others, the 13% the who don't know. So the public perception out there, we might take a little bit of reassurance as economists that the majority of people think, oh yeah, men and women do economics. But you go take those half out and it's very worrying, the predominance of thinking it as a male discipline rather than a female. And the next graph is even more worrying. The next graph breaks down those respondents into age groups. So of the both equally, for example, which was, remember, the majority of people said both equally, it's the, the, the 18 to 24-year-olds in the green, the orange to 25 to 49, the blue 50 to 64, and the aqua color, the 65 plus. So the both equally, it's the predominant, let's see, the big group, or the biggest group, in term, are the older people. The older people think of economists as associated equally with being men and women as economists. Go down to the young 18 to 24 year olds, the people who are studying, might be studying degrees or shortly after degrees or work young, young in their working life. 42% of them associate, only 42% associate with both equally, and an equal number effectively associated with men. The proportion associating it with men is higher for the young people than with the older people. And that's a really worrying. I, my priors and how economics has changed and it has changed in terms of the gender composition, my priors would have been exactly the opposite. That at the moment, I think there are more prominent women in world economics than ever before. So there are now role models. Maybe in the past there haven't been many role models, but there are now role models as prominent women in, in world economics. If you want to work as an economist, the biggest non-academic employer of economists is the Government Economic Service. They employ about 1,500 economists, and a third of those are women. So a bit better, actually, overall than, than the academic. And it's currently, as I said before, currently headed by, by two women jointly with the Government Economic Service. And the percentage of women in the higher or in the government economic service is at all levels a bit higher than in, than in the academic economics. So back in 1986, there were 5% of the senior women in the government economic service. That increased to 10% by 2001 and 32% by 2000, 
by 2011. So if you think of the senior levels of the government economic service as being somewhat, somewhat similar to professors, which I think broadly speaking you can, there is a substantially higher proportion of women in the government economic service. It leads me on to talking about the gender distribution in different areas of economics. I said there was a, women are often in more, more applied areas. About 23% of men in those top departments were working in microeconomics or, or, or micro theory. And you can see they're very different. At that point, there are only about 4% of the women whose primary research interest, according to that classification, was in micro or theory. Very different distributions across the sub areas of economics of the people working in the top departments. So it does indicate that women and men are interested, even in this top, this top level, this top 50 department level, are interested in different areas. It's interesting, and you can ask why, but I don't think it's necessarily in itself a cause for concern. As long as, as long as, as economists and professionals, all areas of economics are regarded a priori as, as, as equally important that good work can be done in, in different areas. Economics undergraduates, just where, where do the women who, who ultimately become economists, whether in the GES, academia, or wherever they become economists, they're going to study economics degrees. Well, here's data from 2003 up to 2014-15. Around about a third of undergraduates of, in economics in England are women. Well, it's often said that women don't do economics because it's can be quite mathematical. Well, the percentage of women in maths is higher. The percentage of women in maths degrees is a high 30s, up to about 40%. So it doesn't really quite, and, and deeper studies haven't, haven't found it stacked up, so it's saying it's, well, it's just, it's just because economics can be quite mathematical. It, it doesn't stack up as the, it may be a factor at the margin, but it's not the main factor. So there is actions being taken currently, Certainly the Royal Economic Society, uh, where we've been discussing diversity very much recently. One of our four priorities for the next four years for the RES is diversity with a particular focus on, well, not just on women, but diversity generally, but obviously gender is an important part of that. We've, we've provided some, out, some funding for schools outreach to try and encourage diversity. We've got a mentoring retreat for junior women academics in economics, which is hugely oversubscribed. It's a huge increase and far more than can, be, than can be accommodated in that event. So I think there's a huge interest in it. Government Economic Service is certainly working hard at the moment. And part of that is the degree apprenticeship scheme program. It's going to start here at the University of Kent, where there's been talking to Alistair. There's a definite focus on gender as part of that and the diversity. There was a first ever conference hosted by the Bank of England, but including the, uh, the, the US Federal Reserve, there's European Central Bank that took place at the Bank of England this year, in May this year on gender and career progression within economics. So I think there is positive signs for the future. I think that there is a lot of emphasis on gender, a lot of, a lot of realization that the discipline, if it doesn't, embrace more women, increase the participation of women in economics, the discipline itself will suffer because women bring a different, different perspective on many issues than men do. Everybody is conditioned by their background and their experiences and that women could bring a different perspective on some issues than, what, than, than do men. So I think the signs are, are positive for the future. Thank you. <laughs>